the rain was out in full force last weekend, but it didn't dampen spirits one bit. There were some great calf tilts as the season winds down. This is Calf TV. Hey folks, I'm Alex Bashevansky. Great show for you today. Interviews with not one, but two different teams here in the studio. And that's coming up later on. First, let's get to those like a game highlights and we might as well lead off with the big story. Undefeated ADP still has one game left in the under 14 group. And that's on October 16th, but Mississauga United finished off their under-16 season last weekend. They were the only other undefeated team in CAF. Not losing a single game all year is a massive accomplishment, and all that stood between United and Immortality was Brampton Elite. Could they pull it off? CAF Game Highlights now brought to you by Leica Sports. Leica, your passion, our commitment. The only blemish on United's record this season was a tie against DFC on opening day. Uh, Elite gets the first good chance in this one, though. Yufa Randawa out front spins and burns it just wide of the post. The 26-minute United strikes first. What a shock. It's Dante Walks as he strolls in and puts it home. And Missy leads Elite by a 1-0 count. Uh, Luca Rosardo comes up with the save of the week here off the Ose Ibi header right there. Absolutely huge stop to keep the deficit at one. And then it's more from Rosardo just before the halftime whistle as Sean Costa tests him. But there he is with a nice save again. Second half, Mississauga continues to dominate the play. Look at the moves by Walks here. Once again, Rosardo with the save. This time, though, Chidi Nolim is there to knock home the rebound. And Missy goes up by a 2-0 count. United had so many weapons this year, and Walks was one of their top dogs. Here he fakes out uh, the Brampton keeper, and then the defender puts it home. Dante's second of the game to stretch the Mississauga lead to three. This game would have been so much worse for Branton without Rosardo between the posts. Another huge save here, this time on IJ Haley in the 59th minute. And then Rosardo showing absolutely no fear, sacrificing his body to make two more huge saves. And then the rebound flies wide of the post. Mississauga wouldn't need any more. 3 0 United, your final. So Saga finishes the under 16 season undefeated. Afterwards, Al Vukskevich discussed how it felt to go without a single loss. I don't know, it feels, feels pretty good because the teams in here are pretty, they played us pretty well, so I think we did a good job this whole entire season. So I think we played, first half we were a little shaky, but we started picking it up after, and then we got the goals that we needed, so we just finished off the season pretty well. Well, Chantilly Forever under 16 was deadlocked with Epic in a tie for second place heading into last weekend. It's been a challenging few weeks for the boys from Hamilton as they've been without top striker Israel Perrin who went down with a broken collarbone, but uh, they persevered and could take back second place all to themselves with a good result against Future last Sunday. Future has one more game after this one, but that's it for Chantilly uh, this season in calf play. Leonardo Rancarolo was causing all kinds of trouble for Chantilly all day long. He returns on the Jets, but hammers it off the side of the net. 12th minute now. Chantilly pressing, uh, King Wetterburn throws it out front off the wing. Liam Outlaw header, but it flies wide of the net. Uh, 17th minute, it's Ron Carolo on the tack again, but this time he will smoke it just wide of the far post. And uh, it will sound like a broken record because this happened lots. 20th minute now, Leonardo out front shot. Screams it over top of the bar, though. And then it's back to the Ron Carollo show we go. Look at Honor Adejebe. Beautiful moves. Ron Carollo out front. Robbed by Carson Provenzano, though. Finally, though, all of Leonardo's persistence pays off in the 30th minute as he charges down the middle here and collects it. One times it. Beautiful setup. Beautiful goal. And it's one zip future. Second half, though, Chantilly gets it back. Free kick is taken here. Uh, Anthony Greary can't handle the funny little hop. And Liam Outlaw puts it home. Chantilly knots it up. 1-1 through 64 minutes. 72nd now. There's Ron Carollo again. This guy was close so many times on the day. Just before the final whistle. Chantilly with a last gasp attempt here. But the shot is denied by the keeper. So... It ends up 1-1, great back and forth game. Afterwards, Chantilly head coach Carmen Provenzano 
commented on both the game and his team's overall performance on the season. Uh, the team did uh, pretty good today. I mean, uh, we, we struggled in the back a little bit because uh, we don't have all our starters here. But uh, the academy's deep, and uh, we give some other players some chance uh, chance to play, and it was well done. Up front, again, um, we're hurting without uh, Israel Perrin in the lineup, but uh, we did well up top. We went to a different formation, so uh, it worked out very well. Welcome back to Cafe V. Alex Bastiabanski here in the Rogers studio. Joined now by two members of Chantilly Forever. We've got uh, Shabazz Perrin and David Campos, who run the program. Guys, welcome to the show. We had you on last year, yes, so you're familiar with the surroundings. Just a different set this time, basically. But, uh, guys, um, you played your last games uh, this weekend, under-16 team and the under-14 team. Uh, you guys played off, uh, played against Future, the under-16s. Yes. Um, and didn't it tie? Let's just start with, with you know, end of the season and stuff. Were you guys satisfied with the way things went this year? Yeah, I was very satisfied with how things went this year, you know. We found very, very solid competition. Uh, every game was uh, what you wanted as a coach in terms of uh, quality. You know, even uh, regardless of the score of the game, we, you know, you look back after the game and said, wow, like, I mean, look at the quality. Look how the, yeah. both teams really passed the ball, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's, uh, we had some games in Hamilton and I had some people come out and watch the game and they, they, they echoed the exact same thing, you know, about the quality, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we were really happy with the facilities this year and yeah. really happy with... Oh, we'll say it's a beautiful field, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, really, really, it's a really nice place. place. How about you? Yeah, I think it's great. You know, it's uh, you know you, you travel out there, and it's just it's just phenomenal. Like every game is very good, and that was a very competitive game. It was very good. Yeah, good way to go out on Sunday too. Yeah. It was it was, a, it was a good game by both teams. We're getting wasn't great it? weather, which is perfect. Yeah. So it's great to play. Yeah. Oh, you guys missed the rain though. That was the under four games. <laughs> yeah. You got hit with the rain, so yeah. you can say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's uh, the star player for you guys all year, and uh, it was it was. Uh, Israel Perrin, which is Shabazz's son, and he was a star all year for the guys at Striker. Unfortunately, a broken collarbone. Uh, going back about three weeks? Yeah. Is about that about right? Three weeks ago. Um, and uh, w what happened? Uh, for how did that go down anyway? It was, it, it was uh, definitely unintentional. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it was a, I thought it was a tackle from behind. Probably could have worn to the card, but having said that, um, he was tackled in another uh, it was pace we were playing against. Another pace player fell on top of him. Mm -hmm. It was just one of those awkward moments. As he fell, I realized that it was a bad fall, and you know I didn't didn't realize it was a break. But yeah. I mean, it, he's a tough kid, and when he's demanding the ambulance be called right away. Yeah. You know? No, there was unfortunately so. the ambulance got called for that, and uh, you, I saw you bringing the ice over and stuff. But uh, how's the recovery coming along? It's coming along pretty good. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, he's now out of the pain. So at first couple weeks he was in some pain, but now the pain is gone, and that's the first sign that things are going in the right direction. We're going to take him back to the doctor and get him a, a checkup to make sure it's healing in, in the right way. Um, no. Let's talk about the under-14s for a second. Uh, we saw a fantastic game this weekend um, of them against Elite and pulling out a great 3-1 win after being down 1-0. Uh, they came back and won it in the, the torrential downpour as we, uh, as we were just talking <laughs> about. But uh, under-14s this year, how satisfied with you guys oh. that we're with them? I'm very satisfied with the under-14 group. I, they got off to a, you know, a rough start. I think uh, our first four games, uh, I, I could be wrong, maybe even five games, we didn't, didn't win. But um, in the last half of the season, I believe we, we turned that right around, you know what I mean? And um, there were some personnel changes. There were some things that, um, that we needed to get stable, and I'm very happy towards the end of the season that those things were stable. We, we finished the, the, the season with a come-from-behind win. And that's the kind of strength that those boys are looking forward to going to the offseason. Right. So I was, right. really, was really happy with, with how they ended the season as opposed to how they started it. And strong performances too against ADP, who was like the runaway team this year right. when undefeated in the under-14 group. You guys always played them really strong, even though you didn't beat them. Um, strong performances against them anyway. Yeah. So um, so uh, winter time, what's going to be happening now that the uh, the outdoor season's over? What's up with Chantilly? What, what programs will you guys be running in the winter time? Well, basically we run a... A program that's you know we run the same cycle about four times a week we are going to be going into a physical strength training uh, combined with you know technical training and tactical training which we will be doing with with on turf fields um, basically um, you know our, our goal is to is to find as many you know good games as we can this year we're, we're probably you know gonna 
not be able to play in the league, unfortunately, due to distance and travel. But um, so we won't be in the Catholic League over the winter. In the winter time, yeah. Yeah, but uh, we'll be back in the summer. But um, over that time, we, we hope to invite as many you know good teams to come and play us over the winter. That way, we can keep our boys sharp. Um, there's also some talk about doing some showcasing. Uh, we have a, I've identified three or so of my older players from '99 that could get a scholarship, and happy to say one has been offered a scholarship already Fantastic. right now. So. Um, that part of the showcase program is going very good and we're just looking to, to plan over the next month to ensure that the next six months of the winter we have the best possible training and best exposure for our players as well. But you will be back in CAF for next summer. 100%. 100%. <laughs> um, we've got about a minute left and, and you know, sort of bounce back to this actually. I meant to ask this before um, about, about Israel because uh, we got 45 seconds. Can you quickly mention there was interest from the Jamaican national team. Right. What happened with that? Well, he was uh, initially, uh, we, he went down to Jamaica um, two times. First time he went down, uh, he, was, he was called back and he was very excited. Second time he went back and, was, again, um, was unfortunate to be, you know, not make the 23-man roster. Right. But um, he still made the 30-man roster. And, I mean, it's about 115 kids that were looked at in total. So, um, and they're keeping an eye. Yeah, and they're, they're keeping, keeping a little eye. eye. Yeah. You know, yeah. he, the coach was very, was very keen and very fond of them, said that he's a very good player. And... You know, basically, he still has hopes that he could he could uh, break his way into the team. Well, we're looking forward to. Are you going to keep me updated on that as to what's going on? Yeah. We're out of time, guys. Thank you. Awesome. It's been a pleasure Thanks watching you guys sure. all season. Have a great winter. Looking forward to seeing you guys for CAF in the summer next Excellent. year. All Excellent. Right. Take care. More CAF TV coming up. This is Welcome back to CAF TV. As mentioned, we've got lots of interviews today, and now we are honored to be joined in the studio by Mississauga Under-16, Mississauga United Under-16, pardon me, the Under-16 champions this year, and that's right, undefeated the whole way. Guys, welcome to the studio. Pardon me. Uh, it's uh, Rafael Baldi, head coach of the Under-16s, and Sean Costa, one of the uh, goal-scoring uh, studs on the team. There were quite a few of those, though, actually, to go around this year. So, guys, welcome. And uh, let's start with Coach here. Coach, uh, how does that feel? Undefeated season? Uh, it's a good feeling, you know. Um, it's always good to go, to go undefeated. It's very hard to do, too. So I'm proud of the boys for the hard work yeah. throughout the season. As, as the player, the player's perspective here. Uh, amazing. Uh, we worked hard as a team all season. Uh, I think we deserve to win. Played well, worked as a team, and uh, well deserved. Is this something at the beginning of the season? Did you think that this was something that was attainable for you guys? Were you not sure? And then getting towards the end when you realized, okay, we're still we haven't lost a game yet. Is this something you guys were aiming for as the season got on? Yeah, we tried to do our best the entire season. We knew we could win every game. We knew we we had the confidence to to go to every game and play as a team, play our hardest. And closer to the end of the season, we. Uh, we thought, man, this can actually happen, an undefeated season. Yeah, and you guys did it. What does this guy bring to the field every time he steps on? This guy's a beast. He's a versatile player. He can play any position, which is always good for a coach, you know. If you need somebody to slip in in a certain position, he could do it. Uh, and he's a good leader and respectable kid, you know. Who was your influence growing up? Who's the one player you looked at you wanted to either emulate or who really inspired you as a player? Uh, I really liked the way David Beckham played just because uh, he was also somewhere in the positions I play and he wasn't too good with his feet but everything else he, he was on point so I kind of took perspective from him and try to try to do the things he did when he was my age. So is that, would, would the goal be, of course he started off in England, would the, would the goal yeah. be for you to be an EPL player someday? Yeah. What's your team? Uh, I like Manchester City. Oh, you're the Good man. Yeah. I thought he was going to say United was going to break my heart there. Yeah, hey, I'm United. Um, so a lot of, lot of fantastic players on this team. And, and after the game on Sunday and when I was talking to Raphael, I brought it up that uh, probably I would say your biggest goal scorer this year, aside from yourself, was uh, Giordano Mancini. And I hadn't seen him for a few weeks on the pitch, so I was wondering, did he leave the club? Has he been injured or something like that? That's not the case. So tell us actually what is the case with Giordano, what's going on right now? It's very exciting, actually. Yeah, he's currently in uh, Greece, in an uh, Arsenal camp there. So what it is, is they have him there for a year. And if he does good, he'll go over to England, Arsenal camp over there. 
So he's staying over there for a full year? Yeah, full year he's in there. That's fantastic. Yeah, and when did he leave for this? Uh, it was July, July of May. Back in July. Yeah. And you guys just kept on charging without him there. Yeah. Shows the depth of the oh, team. sorry, not July. August. August. August? August? That seems August. a bit more likely. Yeah, yeah. ending yeah. August. Yeah. And, and uh, other guys as well who are being looked at right now to possibly go over to Europe. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, there's a couple of guys looking to leave in January to explore Europe. You want to say something? Uh, I've known the guys who are going to Europe since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. I've played with them all, all, all my life pretty much, and uh, I think it's well deserved for them to go to Europe and explore different teams and see the experience. Are we allowed to say which guys they are? Or is that, a, that on the download right now? Kind yeah, it's of? on the download. Right it's now. on the download. Okay, yeah. I'm sure there'll be updates on the Mississauga United website, which of course you can find out about if you go to MississaugaUnitedSoccer.com. Plug. Now, um, the program. People want to find out more about it. Obviously, you guys have been very successful. Um, just tell us about the program, when it started, and, and why this was started in the first place. I know that's probably more John's category, but uh, yeah. you're there, so tell us about it. Uh, started with John. This year is the first year we actually came into Mississauga United, but I've been coaching a lot of these guys since they were like six, seven, so it's been a lot of years. Uh, our program, we train four times a week. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, on and off the field, I try to work with them. So most of them are like my kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but the program, train, respect the game. You know, that's what we look for. You feel like it's helped your game a lot? Because obviously this is your first year with them. Uh, yeah, when I came to the team, it really pushed me to do better. Teammates pushed me to do my best. Every time I go on the field, leave everything on the field, clear my mind, do, play my best. Fantastic. Guys, what's up for the winter time then? What, what are the plans for you guys now that the outdoor season is going to be done? Winter time, we're looking to uh, play probably two years off, 17, 18, around there. And we're going to go to Europe in March. March. Yeah, we're looking to go to Croatia. Go to Croatia, do some tournaments. It should be mentioned, actually, you guys are, play, they were playing an age group up, yeah. right? You guys are actually under 15. And they won the under-16 group, which speaks to just how powerful this team was this year. Guys, uh, as mentioned, MississaugaUnitedSoccer.com. If people want to find out more, I want to thank you guys for a great season. Thank you. Thanks for having Fantastic us. play. So entertaining to watch you guys play all year long. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. All right. More Cat TV coming up. Welcome back to CAF TV. Brampton Elite may sit second from the bottom in the under 14 group, but if you take a look at their goals against, it's far from the worst. A huge part of that is the play of Alberto the Brick Wall Sosa. The young keeper has game in, game out, been outstanding for Elite this season, coming up with some massive saves. Alberto was, as usual, solid self for Brampton on Sunday, and he needed to be against a hungry Chantilly squad. It wasn't just Alberto in this game though. Both keepers were absolutely phenomenal, but early on Sosa had to come up huge with Chantilly threatening as he comes off his line here to rob Christian Rudziak. At the other end, Hunter Oakley refuses to be outshone as he stretches to stop Luke Crilly. Uh, Diego Soriano comes charging down the other way. Goalpost though and it was still scoreless. Elite would draw first blood in the 28th minute. Uh, Spencer Girth fights off his man. He smokes at home. And Elite are up by a 1-0 count. And yeah, they were pretty pumped about it too. 39th minute though, Chantilly responds. Sosa makes the original save here. Nobody clears out Sebastian Fonseca. And they were all knotted up at one apiece. Second half, Chantilly continues to shine. Rudziak showing off some nice moves and Chantilly puts it home and they go up by a two to one count and then the cherry on top in the 69th minute Ian Norton uh, will one time the feed out front here and in it goes 3-1 Chantilly and that would be more than enough for the boys in red on this day a fantastic effort by both teams tons of chances Afterwards, a few of the Chantilly boys stopped by to discuss the season and how they thought they fared in the under-14 group. I think the season went very well. We are sitting in, sitting where we want to be right now, and uh, 
yeah, I think it went very well. We played as a team. We got better and better as the season went on. I think uh, we started from the bottom, like at the start of the season, we were in last, and then like now, we did it very well. So we uh, are in like the middle of the pack now. So that's where we wanted to be as the first year for Chantilly. Okay, one more game, DFC and Chantilly under 16, and our thanks to uh, Dave Campos of Chantilly for the game footage, and his squad jumps out to the early lead, Jalen Salazar out front here, and he will slide it past Pocaccini, and it's one zip for the boys from Hamilton, and they would make it two, it's a rare mistake by Alessandro Pocaccini in goal as the King Wedderburn cross ends up just sliding through his hands right there you know he's made so many huge stops this year we'll give him a pass on that one before the half dfc gets one back as they knock in the corner kick to make it 2-1 second half and dfc notches what just may be the goal of the year keep an eye on nicholas bobadilla to the right here and here it comes wow unbelievable goal uh definitely worthy of a second look here as we'll slow it down, the little back heel flick, absolutely world-class. Not only is it gorgeous, but it secured a tie for DFC 2-2 final. What a comeback by the boys from Bradford, who were down 2-0 in the game, and you'll be seeing that goal from Bobadilla again very, very soon. First, let's take a look, though, at the league table where all the teams sit, and most of the games are done now. Uh, ADP on top in the under-14s, followed by London Elite, uh, Epic, Chantilly, a Brie closely behind them, uh, Elite, and on the bottom, Toronto International with six points. Under 16s, United, the runaway winner of that group, followed by Chantilly, uh, then Epic, Dragon Force, Pace FC, Future, ADP, and Elite with six points. And then the open group, Toronto Croatia, the runaway winners of that group, followed by Atomic, uh, then Brampton City, Epic. Supernova with 19 points and BSC Academy on the bottom, which is six points this year in open group play. And before we go, let's take a look at the calf countdown, the top five plays from this week. Number five, Mississauga's Dante Walks doing what he's done all season long for United, which is score goals. Lots of them. Deeks out half of Brampton. Very nicely done. Number four, Futures Leonardo Roncarolo. At about 50 chances against Chantilly, was snake bitten until that one beautiful one timer. Number three, Hunter Oakley of Chantilly showing off the vertical as he has to stretch the snag, the header. Great stop. This one topped it though. Luca Rizzardo with the sprawling save against Mississauga United. I threw out my back just watching that. And number one, maybe the goal of the year, DFC's Nicholas Bobadilla, back heel ridiculous goal i think he channeled ronaldo there take a slow-mo look here as the little back heel that is just too sweet and definitely our calf play of the week and we are out of time be sure to catch us next week though for our final show as calf director phil ionati will join me in a review of the 2016 season and just remember keep up on all things with the league calfsoccer.com is the website at calf underscore football on Twitter and Canadian Academy of Football on Facebook, of course. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next week.